everyone, it's Frankie Lou. I'm coming to you today from the kitchen of the Grow Together Homestead where I'm doing a little prep work so I will be able to expand my edible perennial vegetable beds this spring. Now, what is an edible perennial? Many of you know that a lot of the berries and fruits that we have are perennials and that they're shrubs or trees or strawberries, for instance, that come back year after year after year. But there are also a whole series of edible perennial vegetables, which you only have to plant once and you can eat them for a perpetual amount of time. I like that. <laughs> now, another thing I really, really like about the perennials I'm gonna to talk to you about today is that these are hardy, hardy, hardy plants. These are the kind of plants that can go through late frost, early frost, get hit by hail, drought, heat, then inundation, and they go, eh, forget about it, here I am, I'm here to serve you. So I love them. And in fact, some of these perennials seem to thrive under these super harsh conditions that we have here on the Canadian prairies like I have in Southern Alberta. And even if you don't wanna eat them, a lot of these plants are actually super decorative and really ornamental and beautiful as well. So first I'm gonna run through my favorite ones. All right, just so that you can have an idea of what I'm talking about here. Maybe you didn't know some of these were perennials. And then I'm gonna run through some of the do's and don'ts and tips for maintaining these plants in a healthy manner. So first off, I don't think this is a big surprise to anybody. I'm a huge fan of rhubarb. <laughs> I've made many, many, many video about my love of rhubarb and it's for good reason. Here's a couple images. And I have several rhubarb patches on my property. They are incredibly beautiful plants, but not only that, they're incredibly productive. I get pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of food for my family every year from rhubarb, and I have learned how to use it quite extensively in my preserves. So, rhubarb, sweet and sour flavor. A lot of people think of it as a fruit, but it can also be used as a vegetable. I use a ton of it in my sweet and sour cooking. Next up, we're, I'm going to talk about asparagus a little here. Now, I grow a lot of asparagus. I have several patches, and in fact, that's one of the things I'm preparing to do here. I'm going to replant uh, one of my 10-year-old asparagus patches because it is starting to peter out. When I first planted this that asparagus, it didn't... Um, I didn't know some of the things that I do know now about remediating with weeds and it's kind of been choked out a lot by the quack grass that grows here. No biggie. I do tend to plant new asparagus every few years or so, so that I'll always have nice asparagus. It's delicious, comes up super early. And so, and it's a delight to have in the garden. It also turns into a big ferny plant once you've done all the harvesting. But sometimes this stuff, when it's coming up, you have to harvest twice a day because it's just pumping out those stalks once that bed gets firmly established. And it also seems to love these harsh prairie conditions that we have here. Next up, I love this plant, perennial onions. You may also have heard them being referred to as walking onions or Egyptian onions. As you can see, that's a pretty funky looking plant. And it's also an amazing delicious plant and it's an amazing hardy plant. It's one of the first things that I can harvest from at the beginning of the year. I am able to start harvesting greens from the plant here in the Canadian prairies. In the snow, I'm often able to get nice shoots and nice greens from that as early as the end of April, which might sound crazy to some of you who live in the other areas, but considering it still snows into well into May, it's pretty nice to have that. It's delicious and very versatile in terms of whether you're gonna use the greens or the little bulbs on the top, and you can even harvest the roots. I love the flavor of this particular onion, and so I'm very, very happy that I have onions that I don't have to grow. I don't grow green onions at all anymore because it's just so nice to have my perennial onions out there. 
Next up, another one of my favorites. I'm also gonna be planting some more of that today. And that's sorrel. So sorrel is one of those ones that you're either gonna love it or you're not. <laughs> because it is a very strong, strongly flavored vegetable. But I love it. It has a nice lemony flavor and it tastes different depending on whether you're harvesting the younger greens or the older greens. I like the younger greens when they're very, very young, just as they are, but you can cook the older greens and there's actually, it's a really delicious addition to things like soups because it gives a nice tart flavor and it's extremely productive. So I become extremely attached to sorrel. It didn't do very well for me here until I started interplanting it with my perennial onions. And now those two seem to love each other and are doing really well together, which makes me happy because I love both of them. And I have to admit, it's one of my favorite beds to go harvest from is my perennial um, onion and sorrel bed. So horseradish. I know that many of you may think that horseradish is something you really don't want to grow if you're not into super spicy food. Because you think of horseradish as that root, that top root that you're going to be grinding up and making into a horseradish paste. I love that root. I love anything super spicy and tiny. And so I love horseradish that way. But horseradish is actually an amazing green as well. It's almost like having a spicy kale, and I've had a lot of fun playing with different ways to use it. One of my favorite ways is to ferment those leaves when they're young and then use them as a, a wrap, like in a dolomote or a cabbage roll sort of scenario when I'm looking for something a little firmer and for something with a little more tang. And as you can see, it's a really beautiful plant. Another green that I um, have started growing in recent years and I'm pretty impressed with is lovage. Lovage is a huge plant and it actually, I used to mess around with trying to grow celery. Now I don't bother because celery is fussy. Lovage is anything but fussy. In fact, a lot of people think of it as a weed because it is so huge. It takes over an area if you're not careful and it, um, it's so productive and it can be invasive but not if you plant it correctly. And I'm gonna give you a few tips about all of these things that'll help to prevent that. Lovage is another incredible, I, we do a lot of soups and stocks here, and it's gotten to the point where I can't imagine making a super stock without adding lovage because that flavor just adds that extra little something. And I love it, and I love my lovage. You can pretty much use it anywhere that you would think of using celery. It has a little bit of an aniseed flavor as well, but basically, if you were to take anise and celery together, that's the flavor of lovage. And it's a lovely plant too. Last of all, another hardy perennial that I know does really well in this area, but I choose not to grow. I've tried it a couple times and I just didn't enjoy the flavor. But if you do like the flavor, go ahead and grow it. And that's sunchokes. They're kind of a perennial edible sunflower they get really tall, they can take over an area, and they make little tubers that you could use sort of um, as a roasted vegetable. Those are those super hardy, extra harsh condition loving edible perennials that can be grown here in my zone three area. Now here's a few little tips and tricks for maintaining them. First of all, you have to have some patience. As a general rule for almost all of these edible perennials, you have to give them some time. You plant them once and most of them have a very, very big root system. That's pretty general across the board, not for everything, but pretty general. So you have to give it time to develop that good root system. Once you do, you're golden and you can harvest and it'll come back year after year. But for that first year, that second year, if you do harvest from them as they're developing, just do so lightly. Next, if they're gonna feed you so well, ensure that you feed them back. A lot of people just leave these plants on their own, but I find that if you give them a couple rich feedings of compost a year, they're really, really gonna benefit from that. Another point on that is where are you gonna plant it? Choose your site carefully. Most of these plants enjoy full sun and most of them 
if you do decide you want to remove them, good luck because they do tend to develop. Like a, a horseradish root can get this long, as can a rhubarb root, as can lovage. And if you're trying to pull those out of the site, I know people who have <laughs> attempted to remove a rhubarb plant from the same site five years in a row and it manages to come up. So choose your site carefully. I find that almost all of these grow well, as I said, in full sun. They like a little bit of shelter, maybe something that'll form a heat trap like next to a wall or something. And another thing that a lot of people think that you can't do with edible perennials, but I have found the exact opposite, is almost all of these have really enjoyed being in my raised beds. This is another way that I can stop them from being so invasive because it's fairly defined where they are. And if I see a little sprout coming up somewhere outside of that raised bed, I can nip it in the bud literally very, very quickly. And it does tend to keep it contained a bit more. I have never had a problem with a raised bed freezing too early. And in fact, they tend to heat up faster. So I tend to get my, my produce a little bit quicker and I find it easier to amend my raised bed. It's easier to add my compost and my mulch onto the raised bed. And my edible perennials have absolutely loved being in raised beds. Now, when it comes to growing your edible perennials and choosing how to do it, you can use seeds. And I'm today planting some more asparagus seed that I gathered from my own plants. There's whole videos about that on my channel if you're interested. And I'm planting some more sorrel from seed. But when it comes to a lot of them, like rhubarb, lovage, horseradish, they do really well from splits as well. So because of that, a lot of people consider these almost friendship plants. They're plants that in the spring and in the fall, they can be split and you can give a little bit of a root and a stem section to somebody. And before you know it, you're gonna, they're gonna have a lovely edible perennial plant as well. So yes, you can start for seed. And I am doing that today, as I said, with a couple of them, but I have given away so much rhubarb over the years because I have seven patches. I'm a bit obsessed. And it's extremely easy to, with your perennial onions, you just take some of the bulbs off the top and hand those over to somebody. They put it in dirt and they're gonna have a nice little edible perennial onion patch before too long as well. So I really enjoy them because it's a way of sharing my garden perpetually with the people that I love. All right, I know I've gone on and on today because I can. <laughs> I can talk about these plants forever, but if you're interested in seeing more about them, because I do tend to do whole videos about each of these individual plants in the spring when they come up, please do subscribe. Or if you're interested in more about the winter sowing or about our animals that we're raising here or our beekeeping, we'd love to hear your comments. And as always, I hope you take this chance to grow together today. Have a good one.